everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophie and this channel is chronicling my journey of living my best life with multiple chronic health conditions. Today I'm just going to do a hopefully quick medical update as to how things have been going this past week. Um, I did make notes because I doubt I will remember. It's just one of those mornings. Um, so I do have a neurologist appointment scheduled at Hopkins. Unfortunately, it is not until January. That is their first available. It is a virtual appointment. I said I'll take whatever gets me in the quickest. I am on the wait list. So if anyone cancels, I will get notified through the patient portal. And I've already told my supervisor that if a sooner appointment comes, regardless of when it is, I'm taking it. Um, she's totally okay with that. She said, you know, put yourself first, like take care of yourself, all that stuff. So hopefully I will be seen before January, but right now that is when it is scheduled. I'm pretty positive if I went to a like smaller community hospital, I could be seen a lot sooner. But given my history, I don't think that's a good idea. Similarly, sort of like with the ER thing, probably not the best thing to go to a community hospital. Um, but we'll just see what happens there. Unfortunately, I was really hoping for a sooner appointment because I am having some weird symptoms still that I don't know if they're related or not related. I don't know what's going on. So I've had chest pain on and off since this all started. That's not new, but just the timing is suspect. It started like a day or so before the TIA or whatever it was and is sort of continuing intermittently. Um, it's been about two weeks now and I've had chest pain at least a couple times a week since and while it's not unusual, again the timing is just a little suspect. I messaged my cardiologist about it so we'll see what she says. Um, possibly more concerning are the headaches. I don't know if they're concerning because I haven't seen a neurologist, um, but why I'm not as concerned as I would be is that they move. So I don't have it in one spot all the time. It could be in the front of the head, the side, the back, the sinuses, it just moves around. And that doesn't, to me, that doesn't seem TIA related, but I'm not a neurologist. I have no idea. Um, I am asking around on various like Facebook groups for people, like if you've had a TIA, did you have headaches? If so, did they move around? Just trying to see what other people's experiences are because that's the best I can do right now. I did let my fibromuscular dysplasia specialist know. I messaged her this morning. Obviously that's not her area of expertise. But since fibromuscular dysplasia does carry the risk of stroke, albeit normally it is not an ischemic stroke or TIA, which is what they assume I had, um, she'll probably know a little bit at least about what's sort of normal after the fact, so we'll see what she says about that. Otherwise, I normally don't get headaches, so it's very weird. Um, I used to get headaches when all of this started back in 2020 and wearing oxygen sort of fixed that. I didn't really have headaches since. Obviously I wear oxygen all the time now and it hasn't been a problem so I did turn my oxygen up last night before going to bed and for the first day and many days I did not wake up with a headache, turned the oxygen back down, got a headache within the hour and now it's back up. And I'm still getting headaches, but now they're back to being like the few seconds that I was having like right after the event versus the consistent lasting for hours like they had been the past few days um, well, the past week or so. So I don't know what's going on with the headaches. Um, to be continued, I suppose. Um, let's see here. In other news, I did have my pulmonary function test. I guess that was last week, the week before, I don't know. Time's just running together. Um, for the most part, they were very similar to the last time I had them done. There were some things 
that were lower. Um, for example, the DLCO, which is a measurement of like how well the lungs transfer oxygen from the air to the blood was lower. And the maximal inspiratory and maximal expiratory pressures were also lower pretty significantly, I believe. Um, I've only had those tested one other time, so I don't have as much to go by on those, but they're definitely lower than they were when I had them done in 2020. I don't currently have a pulmonologist, so when I see my primary doctor here in a couple weeks, we'll discuss all of this and we'll see if she thinks I should see a pulmonologist. I'm sort of on the fence because I don't think there's anything they can do. I don't have a pulmonary diagnosis. So, yeah. Uh, lastly, this past Friday, I was up super late. I sort of hang out with someone who works here, who works night shift. I go down and sort of hang out for a few hours. Um, so I was hanging out and I was sort of pre syncable not to the point where Sorry, not to the point I needed to sit down, but definitely I knew my blood pressure was probably on the lower side. I had noticed it before I went down, but I was standing okay. I was just getting like some white spots in my vision and sort of that's what happens when I have low blood pressure. After a few hours of like standing and hanging out, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna go back upstairs. Like I've been like not feeling great this whole time. Came upstairs, checked my blood pressure, standing. It took forever to get a reading. And it was something like 61 over 49 or something ridiculous like that. Um, let me see. Yep, 61 over 49. And then I sat down and checked in. It was 68 over 52. So I ended up drinking a bunch of fluids. Um, I think I ate some like chips or shredded cheese or something trying to get sodium. It was hours and hours and hours after the Entresto. So I don't really know what was going on there. I did hold the Entresto and the um, Torsamide on Saturday. And since then, I have had no symptoms. Every time I've checked my blood pressure, which isn't often, it's been fine. So I don't know what's going on. But my cardiologist did say to stop the Entresto for now, especially considering that I had the TIA or whatever episode a couple weeks ago. Um, so yeah, that's sort of what's been going on in my world, medically speaking. Um, I guess that's it. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day whenever it is you're seeing this, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.